Hatia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Everybody hear me? <laughs> okay, my name is uh, Brian, and I'm here really to. Sorry, I'm here to talk about a new discussion group, which is uh, stocks and the economy. I should say right, right at the outset that it's a non-profit. It's purely a discussion group uh, for people who are of like mind. Um, I, I am not uh, an expert, just a normal guy, and I would like to put my money somewhere in the hopes that it will grow, or at least uh, maintain mer uh, purchasing power. So this group really is just to um, get a group of like-minded people together so we can swap ideas and hopefully um, make some money or at least um, not lose purchasing power. Um, and also, I mean, there are lots of interesting things happening with stocks and the economy. Uh, the economy is never out of the news these days, and certain stocks, you know, are really making the news. Like, uh, I don't know if you heard about NVIDIA a couple of weeks ago um, in the um, artificial intelligence business, up by 30% in a single day. So there are opportunities despite the chaos uh, that's happening around us. Uh, so let me just go on to the next slide and uh, talk about some of the things that are happening. Uh, there's a lot of chaos around, it seems to me. And uh, one, of the, one of the biggest crises that's uh, still going on is in the, uh, is in the banking sector. Um, perhaps you've read about the three uh, US banks that have gone bankrupt recently. Uh, so why have they gone bankrupt? Well, one of the reasons is that they have bought um, or have invested in US treasuries, so as part of the asset base. And uh, they bought these uh, US treasuries when interest rates were very, very low. So as interest rates have risen, so the value of their assets has declined. Uh, so that's a big issue uh, for, for these regional banks. Uh, the other big problem that they've got, the regional banks, is that they um, uh, make mortgages or lend uh, money to people who invest in commercial real estate. Uh, for example, they invest in things like uh, office spaces, warehouses, shopping malls, and so on. And if you've read the news, then you'll know that the value of commercial real estate has declined quite rapidly. And this is, one reason is because uh, the demand for office space has declined. And so there's no, no demand for office space, so the value of the office space has declined. And therefore, the value of the mortgage that the, that the bank has um, given to uh, the, the borrower has also declined. So it's a huge problem for banks. Um, so you know, if you're, a, if you're a lender or a borrower, if you're a borrower and you're looking at a commercial office space and the value of that office space is declining, plus you can't get any tenants, well, it increases the likelihood that there's going to be a default. I mean, if you're in that position, why wouldn't you just simply hand the keys back to the bank? So it's a big problem. Now, the other problem is uh, with banks is that... Um, what they tend to do to raise capital is they bundle all these commercial mortgages together and then sell them to insurance companies, for example, like Prudential. So Prudential will buy a commercial mortgage-backed security so that um, they've got another asset, something different, and it provides a higher rate of return, typically, than other bonds. Well then, um, as a as a person who buys these commercial mortgage-backed securities, why would you buy them if they're declining in value? So they can't raise capital to uh, invest further. Um, and then we've got the problem that um, people these days can move their money from the bank, which is paying maybe 0% interest, and buy short-term treasuries, uh, which pay about 5%. So got, they're getting hit from all angles. But it's not just the American banks that are suffering. Um, West, other Western banks are, are suffering as well. And we've, 
uh, recently seen Credit Suisse, one of the big, t uh, one of the two big to fail banks, fail. Uh, so it's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, trouble going on with the banks at the moment, but there are other issues as well. Um, it, 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 oh, sorry. <laughs> So inflation, of course, everflation is in the news. So we've got increased costs for business, uh, reduced consumer spending, and the last um, quarterly report from Walmart uh, confirmed really that uh, consumers are really being hit hard by inflation. And then we've got high energy costs as well in Europe. Um, I'm sure everybody's heard that um, uh, energy costs in Europe are going up, they're skyrocketing. And as a result, numerous uh, companies are going bust, particularly um, in Germany. So it's a real, a, a real problem, but um, you know the, the situation is even even worse when we hear about uh, de-dollarization. So de-dollarization is a is a big issue. Also, a lot of companies are moving away from the U.S. dollar, and no surprise really, because 25 percent of the world's population are subject to some form of sanctions. So what are they going to do? Uh, they're going to, you know, crawl under a rock, or are they going to try so, uh, try and find some other way um, to continue doing business? And numerous countries are moving away from the dollar. It's a slow process, of course, but there are quite a few bilateral um, agreements that are already in place. For example, Brazil and uh, China can do business in uh, yuan and uh, and real. Um, in Asia. In, uh, India has signed a number of agreements, a number of bilateral agreements, so that uh, trade can be done in the rupee, and for example with, uh, with Malaysia in the ringgit. So there is this definite trend away from the US dollar. And uh, the other thing that's happened, of course, is that a lot of companies are changing their, um, their reserves. I mean, back in the 70s, 75, 80% of reserves were in the US dollar, but according to the IMF, it's now down to 58%. So anyone can see which way the wind is blowing. And in the news, of course, there's been uh, the BRICS, the BRICS nations. So they're trying to develop a currency which they can use for international trade, which is uh, separate from the US dollar. So there's a lot of um, very gloomy news, but there are bright spots. Uh, for example, last week, I think the non-farm non payroll was about uh, three times higher than was expected, so that gave the stock market a boost. Uh, the other thing, the other good news, of course, is despite all the gloom, stock markets are going up. So <laughs> why, I just do not know. Uh, in fact, one of the only stock markets going down is Hong Kong for some reason, um, which is a bit weird, uh, bearing in mind that you know, everybody knows that China is um, you know, an economic powerhouse. So it's the opposite of one, what one might expect. Um, so despite all the gloom, as I say, there are plenty of opportunities. So let me just give you a couple of ideas. Uh, so this is just a selection of, of, um, of trends that I've noticed um, over the, the recent years. We already talked about artificial intelligence. That's all in the news. And there are plenty of stocks um, involved in the artificial intelligence um, industry. NVIDIA, of course, is um, almost a trillion dollar company. Then there are, um, there are certain trends in farming, um, some of which um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried about, to be honest with you. We've got uh, companies, uh, sorry, countries like Holland and the European Union doing everything they can, um, it seems to me, to um, reduce the efficiency of, of farms. For example, they're buying 3,000, the, the, the Dutch government is buying 3,000 farms, they are culling livestock, and they're reducing um, the um, use of nitrogen fertilizers. Now, nitrogen fertilizers are essential for crops because without nitrogen fertilizers, what that means is the plant cannot actually produce amino acids. So, if you reduce the nitrogen fertilizer, that means Without question, uh, the crop yields are going to decline. In it, uh, I've recently read in, um, in Ireland, they plan to cull 200,000 cattle. So there are huge changes going on in the farming community within Western countries. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, what are we going to eat? Uh, well, the answer is crickets. Um, 
If I were to ask you the question, where do you think one of the largest cricket processing plants are in the world? You might say, well, it's got to be Thailand, you know, because it's a kind of a delicacy in Thailand, you know, crickets. But in actual fact, one of the largest cricket processing factories is actually in London, Ontario, in Canada, which is kind of a bit of a surprise. It might also surprise you to learn that actually crickets, cricket flour, is already in many uh, consumer products. In fact, you might already have tried cricket flour, uh, but uh, maybe unaware of that. Um, so um, this is an absolute trend, but there are opportunities to take advantage um, of these trends. I mean, there are companies that manufacture the equipment uh, for, produce, for processing crickets and so on and so forth. Um, another trend, of course, is the World Health Organization. And uh, they're currently in the process of um, amending uh, the treaty. I think they've listed about 300 amendments so far. And uh, the amendments will include, you know, compulsory vaccination, digital passports, and so on and so forth. Now, there are opportunities to take advantage uh, of this also. For example, with the mRNA vaccine, for example. Already, uh, there are numerous plants around the world that are being built in readiness for the next, um, for the next pandemic, whatever that may be. There are also... Um, there are also opportunities in, um, in health. It was a quite a surprise to me to read the other day that almost 50% of Americans have a chronic illness. Uh, and unfortunately, that trend uh, is increasing. Um, so, as I say, these are the opportunities that are available despite uh, the chaos that we see around us. Um, and uh, hopefully, if there are sufficient people interested, then we can set up a group, a discussion group, to exchange ideas and maybe set up some kind of um, phantom or, uh, you know, phantom portfolio and see, see how we do to make it uh, interesting. But anyway, as I say, that's, uh, that's my presentation for today. And we're just, uh, you know, as I say, I'm just here really to introduce the uh, dis potential discussion group. Uh, so that we can, you know, discuss these interesting things and hopefully have some fun too. Thank you. Any, any questions on that? Ah, Richard, sorry, I didn't see you there. <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, yes, we have a sign-up sheet uh, with the two names on it. Uh, but my question is, uh, when and where are you uh, pro proposing to have meeting? Um, well, to be honest, I haven't, we haven't re I haven't really thought of that yet. <laughs> I thought I'd see if there was any interest in the first case, first instance, and then maybe choose somewhere that's uh, central for everybody. Um, so I have absolutely no idea where yet, uh, until I have some idea of the, the numbers and where people are located. And how many people do you need? Um, well, so far, I think I've got three, but I know another two people, so six altogether. I think that would be enough, person. But, but, but I'm not, uh, you know, I hope more people do sign up, of course, but uh, I think six is, is a good start. Okay, thank you. How many people in the room would be interested in uh, participating in this? There's a lot of hands, or a few hands, okay. anyway. No? Okay. Anybody uh, have um, some uh, questions? I, I, I have a sort of statement slash question. When, um, when COVID hit, mm -hmm. I, I got into Bitcoin because mm -hmm. to me it was a form of insurance, right? Because mm -hmm. I could see the possibilities that banks would collapse because mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the whole world had been flipped, right? And I'm surprised actually it's taken so long for some of them to collapse. Yeah. But who knows how many have been bailed out right on the quiet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, like Credit Suisse, it was amazing. Anybody put their hand up to, it, that was a basket case, Credit Suisse. Um, anyway, uh, so, uh, yeah, I guess Bitcoin is something that could be discussed in, the, in your, your group, or is it focusing on stocks mainly? Uh, well, I, th I think it's fair to discuss anything that will, um, you know, maintain purchasing power or even, you know, uh, hopefully go up in value. I mean, the, 
Yeah, so why not? I think it's very apposite that we have the financial guys here, you know. So, um, there's a very, I, I do want to say that they, they do have a very interesting uh, investment opportunity that was introduced to me by one of the Andy Lees. And, uh, yeah, it's wor well worth considering. They might come and t give a... S oh, yes, we're going to have some words. Uh, say, I'm, uh, I've been dealing with this kind of uh, scenario for about 30 years. Um, I am conscious of the fact that it's a discussion group and I don't want to turn up and try and promote products. Um, but if you be okay for me attending, maybe I can come up with some suggestions or some ideas or some background on what you're talking about. Um, and I would be happy to attend the group just on a, you know, a question and answer basis, mm -hmm. uh, if you're interested. I think any source of information is good, right? Any yes, source course. of information and ideas, especially people who have been doing it for so long. We have a very small token, not too expensive, not going to bankrupt us. <coughs> for our <laughs> Thank you okay. for giving a talk. That was very good and very timely too. Because the first talk was quite wonderful, but of course short. So um, next week,